greet all of you in the name of Jesus. While well, I'm quite surprised. I'm told it's very cold outside, but you managed to come nevertheless. It happens to Jesus for that. People are scared. Because of cold. But I thank God that whether it's cold or not, you are not going to back down to surrender to the devil. If we skip one Friday, we don't send the fire. And the devil can make a party on that Friday. They will not make a party because you are here. We are going to send the fire to disband and to dismantle all their powers only in the name of Jesus. We are going to read Judges 16 from verse 1. We might end in verse 21. It will depend. One day, Samson went to Gaza, where is he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, at dawn will kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Some time later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Before we go to Delilah, this story we have already dedicated this message the story of Samson and Delilah everyone knows it to a point where they don't even talk about the Gaza story because the Gaza story was the last story it was the last great story of success by the man of God Samson was a man of God he was holy he was sanctified he was a model of holiness and power Samson was a genius before God he was a hero through all Israel Samson was extraordinary Samson. Nobody could compare to his power. Samson was an anointed man. Extremely anointed. We are going to talk about him. Not only him, but each one of us that has got the same power as that of Samson. Because something is going to happen now. Contrary to what happened in Gaza, he was moving from Harlot to Harlot, from prostitute to prostitute, with the holiness of God. And the holiness of God never left him. He was a model of holiness and power. He was an extraordinary man of God. We are going to talk about his anointing because there is a point at which you need to understand the anointing that is within you. Now, let's go to to the Delilah story. That one was the story about a harlot in Gaza. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered him, If anyone ties me with seven flesh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, 
if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my head into a fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into a fabric, and tightened it with the pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his head, and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they sent him to grinding grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Thank you. Now, the theme of this evening is protecting your anointing. Most of us are extremely anointed. Whether we know or we don't know. But you are extremely anointed. Now, the anointing that you have is the only inheritance Jesus has given you. It's a special treasure from heaven. Now, you need to protect this anointing to a point where even if they nag you to death those that love you the most you must live with the conviction that you need to protect the anointing that God has given you. It is the only treasure that is within you. We were talking about you getting miracles and success using other miracles. But the greatest miracle is within you. It is the connection between you and God. It is the relationship between you and God. In respect of that connection, in respect of that relationship, God has given you a special anointing. But that anointing, you need to move by the conviction that it is not positioned in you for no worth. You need to be able to arrive at a position where you say my worth is my anointing. I am worth the anointing that God has given me. Throughout society today people have built insurance companies. Those insurance companies don't qualify to protect you on your anointing that you have received from God. The insurances of these companies are there to protect the assets and the properties that you own at a home level or at a company level. Insurance companies, people are using them to protect their riches and their net worth. 
Why? Because they don't want anybody to touch those, those riches. I want to tell you, he who is from above is above all. He has given you an anointing because he's above all. But there's no insurance in this world that can insure you in terms of protecting the victories and the miracles of you being the beholder of the anointing, the treasure from heaven. You need to arrive to a conclusion one time when you say, I might not have household goods. I might not have heritage big enough to be protected by insurance companies. Even if it was there, that very same insurance company, it will not move around with you to protect your own anointing. You are going to be that insurance company to ensure the riches that God has given you. In that very same anointing within you that God has given you, He has given all the riches of heaven. He has given all the weight of His power, of His glory, of His light, of His fire in that anointing. Without that connection and the relationship between you and God, which is the anointing of God, you are an ordinary person. Because of the wealth that is built within you in the name of that anointing, you need to come to a realization that I am going to root myself in Jesus Christ in all respects just like a tree that is on a ground. Trees have got a certain wisdom from God. Whenever you begin to plant them on the ground, they begin to root their roots deep into the ground, searching for the, for the waters and searching for whatever nutrition is there in the land. That is why fruits are able to come out of trees. The wealth of every tree is its fruits. The wealth of a human being is in your anointing. All the fruitfulness that you are going to have in this world, it will proceed from you maintaining what God has given you. Somebody has to receive this message in respect to a Samson. Samson's achievements, one of them was the Gaza. To pull the gates, massive tons of gates by the power and the anointing of the men of God to a point where you lifts it very far from the city. People were like ants because of the power that he held. Even today, you are not people of no class. You are people of high class because of the anointing and the treasure that God has given you. I want to tell you something, something very special. Many people are classifying you as a nobody. By the anointing Jesus has invested inside you, the same power of the consuming fire is in the anointing that is inside you. But you need to protect it. There is a reason why you must protect it. If you are moving around like Samson, Samson was chosen. He was of a special elect. Samson had the best titles in the whole of Israel. Samson was a treasure holder. His treasure was power. His treasure was anointing. All of you sitting here, you are treasure holders. You are miracle holders. You are miracles. And not only they're just the ordinary miracles. You are a treasure holder. The anointing of the most, most high God, of the Son and the Holy Ghost, it's in you. You are a treasure holder. You need to reach a point where you say, the anointing that I have, the miracles that I've received in the past few weeks, all the monies and the billions I've received, I must protect them. How do you protect them? 
Samson made some couple of mistakes. He was a judge of Israel. He moved from power to prison. He moved from anointing to prison. Who knows? Most of us, if you are not well rooted in these teachings, the anointings that you have received, all the teachings that you have received, you will end up in the prison. In the enemy hands. Like Samson did. You need to protect your anointing. Including the monies that you have received. Do not be your own blockage of your own success. I am here to give you an advice. The only way to live, if you have to live in this world, you need to adopt certain competencies that have got to do with you protecting your inheritance, protecting the treasure from heaven, the anointing within you. Most of us have got positions where we are, in the workplaces, in governments. Do you know what people do when they are protecting those positions, some of them they consult Sangomas to cover their back. Some of them they travel very far to protect their positions. I want to tell you something very simple. In the anointing from within you, what God has given you those victories in the past few weeks, all the miracles that you have received, the onus is on you to protect them because the enemy wants you to nullify them. You need to wake up all the miracles all the victories all the inheritances all of them you have triumphed over darkness a lot of kingdom rewards are within you already and why because Jesus wants them to live with you for eternity but I tell you why he wants them to stay with you because all his interests are invested in those victories in the anointing, in the inheritance that he has given you. But there's an enemy outside. He wants to fail you. He wants your success. He wants your kingdom benefits. Your kingdom rewards. He's searching for them everywhere. You need to protect them. All those victories. You need to protect them. How do you protect them? Let me tell you, your enemy can be the person that you love most. I did not live in the time of Samson. But Samson loved Delilah. More than other people, he loved Delilah. Delilah in today's time is one of the dominions in charge of fornication. Samson was felt by the thing he loved most. If he had to protect that anointing that he had, if he had to practically protect the anointing and the power that he had, if he wanted to protect the anointing, he was supposed to part ways with Delilah. But you can't part ways with the person that you love most. Because the person who is the Delilah in your life, can actually be the person very close to your heart. In today's society, it can actually be your child. It can be your daughter. It can be your mother. And that person is going to blemish your anointing. You will go down because of your wife, because of your husband. You can go down because of your mother. Your anointing can be blemished because of your own son. You can lose all because of your father. You can lose everything because of the influence of your own family. If your whole family with whom you are covenanted from birth is your downfall, you must protect that anointing at all costs. Prophets of old used to live in the mountains alone and the anointing remained with them. Very few of us are going to maintain the victories that we have received because of the negativities of the people around you. There are people that are blunt, 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 blunt faithless. The weight of the faithlessness around you they will bring down your anointing. All the wealth 
that Jesus has rooted in you in the past few weeks the teachings you are likely to lose it because of your mother and your father and even your own siblings they will talk nonsense to you and rubbish you will lose that faith that you have built in the past few weeks the almighty God has built his interests in the anointing that he has given you you represent him here on earth by the amount of faith that you have built in the past few weeks you represent God the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost there is no inheritance he can give you better than that even if he was to give you money you are going to protect it through insurance practically speaking most of you that have got cars the banks they force you to protect that car by paying money into an insurance company but the same person is failing to protect the anointing you have been crying consuming fire devouring fire you have been asking for miracles as I speak nobody is richer than you in this world the rain of blessings were falling on you but most of you have lost it already because of the people you live with the people you love with they, they speak poisons they speak negativity Blunt poisons have been killing what God has given you. The rain of billions have fallen over you. But they said, Delilah, they will remove your eyes. They will remove your wealth. All the kingdom rewards. You have triumphed over the devil. I know it. No one is richer than you. Not in this world. You are a household of heritage. When we are speaking of the billions of rain falling on the people, even you have to ask an ordinary demon here to search you how many billions does she have. Even an ordinary demon can tell you. During the time of Jesus Christ, when nobody followed him, only the demons followed him. They said, You are the son of the most high God. Nobody had said it. But the demons said, You are. Because they saw in investment in him. Now, God has given you that anointing as a guarantee. That is an all-sufficient God. The sufficiency of God, the totality of the sufficiency of the values of God, they are already within you. You are going to lose them in a matter of weeks. I'm not prophesying. If you don't protect that anointing, if you don't protect that wealth, that has been given you that has been ordained in your life you are going to lose it because of the people that you live with good company can be corrupted by bad company I don't know what you're going to do I'm just going to give you this simple simple analysis there are no people as dangerous as the people that you live with you live within trouble you live in a troubled society troubled families troubled individuals don't let them transfer their troubles don't let them terrorize you because you live amongst them if you want to lose your eyes you will lose the connection between you and God you will lose the relationship the glory will depart all the billions that are invested in you will be lost you are a beholder you are a treasure holder a covenant holder a miracle holder you are a victory holder you are a treasure holder it's covenanted in you by that anointing you are rooted into Jesus Christ by the covenant that is planted within you. In the covenant there is an anointing. Very special anointing. I want to warn you, whatever you have received, it must not be blemished by a Delilah. 
The devil is complaining that we saw you pull a gate. By its roots and bars. They said in Samson, he's like that. We know him. When those people gather together in that mass prayer, we know even the gates of hell will be shaken. Not long we will know more about the gates of hell. The Bible says not even the gates of hell will succeed against you. Not even the gates of hell will succeed. When two or three gather in my name and they are clean, even the gates of hell will be shaken. But when a Delilah is your mother, when a Delilah is your best friend, you will lose the glory. The glory will depart the anointing will go. You are a treasure holder. Already as I speak, the treasure is within your body. How are you going to protect it? You live around people that will terrorize your life. By the way they think, they think rubbish. And it cannot stay in a Samson that is anointed. A Delilah like a Samson. Samson is mine as a judge. Is mine as an anointing. You cannot combine the two. You are not a people of any class. You are not a people of no importance. Jesus was not going to take efforts by reigning the reign of money. As I speak, it's within you. Are you going to protect it? Most people. They've received feedback of success blockage. But all those blockages are coming from satanism and devil worshippers. Some are coming from witches and witch doctors. Some are coming from wizards. And the false churches. I'm talking about success blockage from your own family. Not from a witch. I'm talking about from the best people that live with you. I'm not talking about witches and wizards. Success blockage. Victory blockage, miracle blockage, anointing blockage, until you lose it from the closest people that are with you. That was Samson and Delilah. Samson was divine. By right, he was divine. Samson had rights or power, access to power. They were in his hands. He gave, he gave them away. He allowed the best friend. He allowed the best friend bring him down. The best friend brought him down. Because of favors. He gave away the judge, the entire judge of Israel. Some of you are going to settle for less. You are going to forfeit all the billions that are within you because of compromises. Compromises. You're living with too many people, most of which are deadly. They are poisoners. They are terrorists. They don't love money. And they will never have it. But because you live with them, you are a hero. Or if you are a she, maybe you are a shiro. I don't know if there's anything like a shiro. Maybe you are a hero or a shiro. You are a genius before Jesus. You are sanctified and holy. When he looks at you, he thinks you are worthy of receiving all the millions and billions and the rain. You are completely indebted to Jesus Christ. You are indebted to protect that grace. The grace is within you already. People are flying around. I'm not talking about the fly by night. I'm not talking about the witches. I'm talking about the best. They're after your miracles and your victories. You already have them. They are after the kingdom benefits and kingdom rewards. They are close to you. But if you are incompetent in analyzing who is going to bring me down, your Delilah is never a person you will think if you were to raise up Samson and ask him brother Samson what happened? There's a statue in Israel there's a statue, I saw it in 2004 there's a statue in his own hometown they built a statue 
back his day. They said the most foolish man. But in the day is one. Well, Samson is my hero. Samson really come along. Because there's a verse 28. Verse 28 in that chapter. When the hair grew up, he killed school. more enemies. He killed more enemies. Than when he was foolish. Do you know? that on Friday the consuming fire has brought you more riches. The devil says I've never seen riches in one church. He said it's a crime what God did. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. The devil say, I mean the principalities. They said we've never seen it. Never ever. We've never seen money rain on people like Some that. Some of you have lost it already. I know it. Yes. Some of you have lost it. Some have lost 50%. The threat to your riches and to your prosperity is not witches and wizards. It is you and who you live with and whom you choose to trust. They will bring you down. You are not people of no class. You are not people of no importance. You are supposed to protect it for yourself and for the generations to come. You are supposed to protect that relationship with God. You know why? Yes, Gungan. You have got that anointing. It is the only connection you have with the Almighty. It is the only relationship. Don't blemish it. But the people you live with. God has rated you very high. He has rated you very high. That's why he has given you that anointing. He has given you those kingdom rewards, the kingdom benefits, all those miracles and victories, all that money. You are highly rated. But I'm here to tell you, very simple, practically speaking, most of you have lost it by what you watch, the way you live, what you choose to live, it must be able to protect you. The way you live, whom you live with, the way you walk, for your own trouble. Samson chose that Samson trouble of Delilah. He chose it. Why is Ketele Delilah? Samson chose. You are your own threat. Your own difficulty. You are your own curse. You are your own terrorist. By whom you choose to live with. When people speak, I says them, this one is my size of faith. I can put up with you. If they speak low, relegate them. There is a certain there's a certain proverb Jesus gave me. Listen, I didn't understand something. He said that person doesn't qualify to be part of the foundation. The church is going through foundation. We don't want people who criticize too much. We want zero criticism. There are people who in this world they flourish by opposing everything you say. They test it. Is it they test it. He said that one doesn't qualify. But if you bring this person at roof level, not at foundation, they will pitch the best roof because they will test the winds when they come. But they don't qualify to build the foundation. I will eliminate that one. In order for these people to be there, I don't want. I want zero opposition at foundation level. He says the building I'm gonna put on that foundation. The number of stories are high. It has never been built in this world. It has never been built. So I want zero defect at foundation level. Even the foundation of your life and the people you live with. There's too much criticism. There's too much negativity. You need to assess. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 elsewhere he says you must discuss spiritual things with spiritual people. If you see the spirituality is too low, we are at foundation level. Assess them. They are not your size. You are wasting your time. They will bring you down. A judge and a Delilah in one room, he came down 
where she was. Instead of her being lifted up to where he is in the seat of power, the man of God came down. You must choose friends. You are rich already. Don't stoop low. You are not poor. The miracle of the billions is already with you. Protect it. I will protect mine. Let me tell you for your information. I have already started claiming mine. I asked him, how do I claim it? We will tell you now when it is time for revelation. I'm going to tell you what you are going to do in order for you to claim your own money. It's already there with you. But some have nothing to claim. You lost it. You lost it. You blew it already. We'll cry for more. It will come back. I know some of you. I'm not looking at you. You are not here. You didn't come. Those that lost it. You blew it. Protect it. It's yours already. Why did you waste the whole Friday crying, rain of fire? Protect it. You know when a person is speaking rubbish. You tell him now. I'm telling you I've got a watch. He says you don't have it. Why don't I see it? We don't walk by sight. It's not by might. It's not by power. Many people of you are discouraged. How can you lose a billion rand by words? By words. Even a million rand, I will refuse it. I will not allow you to take my wealth. This is restoration time. All has been restored to you. The miracles you have, you have asked, they are there. You know, in this world, people sin. Many people do wrongs because they trust on lawyers and advocates. They know they will stand and defend them. You know why? You are your own advocate. You are supposed to advocate for your survival. You must choose who you live with. Anybody negative. Anybody negative. It doesn't matter whether it's your mother. Chase her away from your life. You will lose that money. Receive the money and go and give it to your mother. But if you lose it, you all lose. You all lose because of one person. Brutally negative. Uh, uh, faithless people. They will tell you. We see you are running up and down. Into the Where are the fruits? You already have the fruits. And you say, but I think this person is right. And then you lose it. And you know what? I made a prayer. I said, Jesus, I want to offer rule. Those people that are faithless and they are losing those billions. Please let it not go back to darkness. Because it took so long. Do you know why we made prayers from January until today? For the, for, for the Friday reasons. We could never have released that without those mass prayers. That's why I gave you a break. I said, go and rest. You got it. He could have given you a two years rest and said, go and rest. You got what you want. It took six months of prayer. But one day you lose it. Protect that anointing. It's yours. Little Delilahs are flying around. Delilahs are always beautiful and smart. Nice. Good looking. They're the best things in the society. They're calling you. Come my way. They've seen the money. Do you know that the devil has been salivating over you? They have been salivating everywhere you are. They see the money. They said, wow, this one. What, what happened? She has not what been like this. Again, they can see the money in you. They will draw you close. But don't lose. Because of this little. The Lilas that are around you. We saw you pull the gate. Massive gates of, of the city of Gaza. When you were in power in the mass prayer. When the Lila comes, you lost a billion rand. In a week. It's not even a week. You lost it. How much I nearly cried. When Jesus says. I've ordained that power there. 
it's in them, them it's in them they are rich just tell them to go and unlock but the doubt he is saying ah, I've never been rich I've got no prospect where I work there is no chance I can be promoted what not what not with men what is impossible with men is possible with God. Why can't you believe it? All what is impossible with you with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. Why did you waste six months praying? When you get it you lose it in one day. Doubt is your enemy. That is your case. And that doubt is within you. A doubt is a terrorist. That, that leaves you within you. It wants to chase away the money because it's living with the money. It's not comfortable. Because it knows once the money is within you, all your achievements are coming. A series. When you don't like the other, you say, no, another one is coming. You know those people that earn money every week. I know them. They are very wasteful. They will say, ah, well, the Friday is coming. Another one is coming. They don't earn a month. They are very wasteful. Come Tuesday, they are broke. They say, no, Friday is coming. I'm only two days broke, so another one is coming. Some even refuse the jobs that pay a month. Because they say, every Friday, if I'm broke on Wednesday, I've done very well. Let me tell you the honest truth. You are all appointed to live in sufficiency by the God Almighty. You are appointed to live in sufficiency. Not to begin to calculate. Some more money is coming. You must live in sufficiency. To a point where you don't know when you shine. you draw money, you don't look at the stuff. Because it's pointless. You will spend time reading the figures. There are too many. Because when the figures begin to be more than seven, you, you, you will say, hey, they used, you, will, you will squeeze it and put uzo, it in your pocket. Uzo, uzo, the uzo. moment the numbers start seven, eight, nine, Jesus says the figures I was giving you are from eight and, eight and above. And you lose it. How come? How come? You mean you have wasted six months every week praying. And people said, what is the difference? I, I'm not praying, I'm here. Jesus has given you more than all of them. People are lazy to pray for six months. You have prayed for it. You got what you want. You are a treasure holder. A miracle holder. I don't want to call you by the title of the people that are rich. You are a victory holder. You are a covenant holder. Why? Because you were not searching for money. It did not come while you were searching for it. You were not searching for success. You were searching for the kingdom. You were rescuing the whole world by fire. The kingdom benefits. The kingdom rewards. The rain came down. But you must protect it. By fire. By association. The way you live. What you watch on TV can chase away your own success. All those people that are crying when they see success blockage. Now, we are going to write. Remember some of the things we we'll give you as feedback. We don't, write, we don't write all of them because we don't want to condemn you. Some of you, if you write all of them, you would have left already. Because we would have told you who you are. And if we tell you who you are, saying, this one will repent. I know some of them. Jesus told me. I said, hey, you have got a heart. If it was me, I would have told him. I would have told him. Why do you sit in that place? When you know you are sitting, 
in order for you to steal the anointing from the past. That person thinks I'm going to look at him. He's connected to a underworld, stupid, foolish underworld. If I look at him, I will start to go crazy. And I've never looked at him since Jesus told him. I used to do so. He's not here. He's not here. He's arrested by fire. You are not any class of people because of that anointing. You are not a people of no importance or any importance. The anointing that is in you has pulled down that miracle. Now you are a miracle holder. You are that miracle holder. Why lose it? It's not right. It's not right. It has taken you six months to build this foundation. Why can't you exclude few people associated with one? And that one that you associate with, whenever that person speaks, it must be faith statement. It must be power. It must be power from power to glory. When you speak to that person, the people must say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The person must speak fire. If they speak one, um, one man, negative statement, eliminate them. When you are rich, um, bring them back babuise. and give them the money. Say, you nearly fell me. But you know, because I'm part of you, please, with this 20 million run, 20 million dollar, or 20 million euro, no, my 20 million don't give euro. them in rents. Um, rents fluctuate. Give them in euro. euro. This 20 million euro. You are free to do what you like, my mother. I know you are my mother. But I had to separate with you. you. Just to protect my faith. I had to part ways with you. you. So that I can go and fetch my billions. In euros and dollars and pounds. Now I'm back, mommy. Receives this 20 million euro. It's, your, it's, your, it's, your, it's your retirement. You are free to buy what you like. You were my poison at one point in time. I am telling you, protect that the Lila is next to you. It's in your heart. Samson could never have given the best and the top secrets in the heart. Delilah is in the heart. In your heart. He's not in the street. That's a witch that's blocking you. He's not your neighbor. Delilah is at home. They want you down. The way you walk. The people with whom you go. That's your trouble. That's your terrorist. That's your downfall. Protect this grace. Protect this grace. Or protect it. Even the money that you have received. It's your only heritage. What is impossible with man is possible with God. If you think you are a people of no value, 